Hi everyone, this is a quick video on uh, just a summary for how to factor binomials and trinomials and it's just going to go over all the different, well not all, but most of the ways that you'll, uh, you'll come across, okay, when it comes to factoring binomials and trinomials, okay. So one of the first things you always have to remember, no matter if it's a binomial or a trinomial, is are there any common factors? Is there anything you could factor out from here? And if you look at the 3, the 9, and the 6, you'll probably agree with me, we could factor out, each of these could be divided by 3, or a 3 could come out, or there's different ways of saying it. Each of these is divisible by 3, so what would be left on the inside if we were to take the 3 out, outside of a bracket, and I'll put inside the bracket what's left? 3 times x squared would give us 3x squared, and then, well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Don't forget the x, though. And let's verify, 3 times 3x will give us 9x, good. And then the last one, 6 divided by 3 is 2. The signs are just, be careful of the signs, sometimes they're negative, so be careful. But anyway, what we've done here is we've factored, we've done something called common factoring. And then at this point, um, we would have a trinomial. And from there, we would factor it really quickly and say, what two numbers multiply to make 2 and add to make 3? And you'd say, well, there's only 2 and 1. 2 times 1 makes 2. And if you added those up, you would get 3. So this would be our, our answer in factored form. We'd be taking this um, trinomial, or you could call it a parabola or a quadratic. You're taking this from um, standard form, where it's written this way. This is standard form. And you're turning it into factored form. Okay, we have just factored it. Let's go to another example. What if you get a question like this, 9x squared minus 25. When you're looking at this, yes, it is a binomial, but if you see a minus sign in between, and if you see that the 9 and the 25, if you see the very first term and the last term happen to be perfect squares, then you know that you can just write it very quickly. You don't have to do much more. Um, you just have to go, okay, I see, I'm going to take the square root of this and I'm going to take the 25 and take the square root. And the way to write it down is you do it twice. When you have a, these are called a difference of squares because this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. So you write it out like this. And the only difference is you just write one with a positive sign, one, one with a negative sign. What happens is the positive and the negative, if we were to expand this and multiply it all out again, I'm not going to do that right now because we're trying to make this video a little shorter. If we were to multiply all this out, the positive and the negative would cause us to have a middle term that would cancel itself out. We'd be left with just the first and the last term. The middle term would cancel out. And you can try it if you want. You can push pause and try it if you like. But that's how you factor a difference of squares. Let's keep going. Next, this is called a perfect square trinomial. It's kind of like the last one. The first and the last terms are definitely perfect squares, but in this case, it's a trinomial, okay? And so the quick method for dealing with perfect square trinomials, and remember, I do have videos that explain everything I'm doing here in greater detail, okay? So you don't have to look at this video and say, what, what did he, what was he saying? No, you can go and look and see, look for a video that I have on perfect square trinomials and you'll see. It'll explain it a lot better, okay? But for this kind of situation, all you do is you say, okay, what's the square root of 4x squared? The square root of that would be 2x. We've got a plus sign in the middle, so you put the plus sign there. You don't worry about this middle term. I know, it sounds crazy. And the square root of 9 is 3. And really, you're just multiplying this twice. So for perfect square trinomials, when you have a perfect square here and a perfect square there, you can do this right here, and it's a trinomial. If you were to multiply this all out, um, plus 3, if you were to multiply 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3, if you were to multiply it all out, let's just do it in our heads because we're trying to make this video shorter, you'd get 4x squared, plus 6x, plus another 6x, that would make 12x, plus 9, and then we'd be done. So this really does work. This quick method here really does work for perfect square trinomials. Let's keep moving on. 
Okay, here we have a regular trinomial where the first term is 1. And we remember in the very first question we looked at, we actually had this situation where we, we just take the x, put it here and here, and the 2 you say, what multiplies by 2 but adds to get 3? And you would say 2 and 1, just like we did at the very beginning. The signs are all positive, and we're good to go. That's a per regular trinomial where the first term is 1. The only thing that's a little more complex is a complex trinomial where the first term is not 1. See the first term here? It is not 1. It is a 2 in this case. So I have two videos and I really recommend if you don't know how to solve these kind of questions, these are called complex trinomials. One method is called decomposition. It's the method that most math teachers to teach you. And Then I have another method called the box method which is really fun and <laughs> it's my opinion and yeah, it gets you the answer quite quickly. I think because most teachers use decomposition, I'll quickly do this using decomposition with you, but I'm just going to do it quickly because I have a whole video on decomposition and I recommend watching that as well as the box method. Okay, So for either decomposition or the box method, you multiply the first and the last term. 2 times negative 6 would give us negative 12. Okay, So we're thinking of two numbers that multiply to make negative 12. And if you added those exact same two numbers, you would get the middle term, which is 1. OK. Well, we know 6 times 2 is 12, but that'll never make 1. So 3 and 4 would definitely be a better option here, right? So 3 and 4 are definitely a better option. The only thing is we have a negative 12, so we're going to have to make one of these negative, And we're going to choose the 3 because negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So these are the two terms that will go in the middle. Okay, So decomposition is when you split this middle term into two parts. We're going to split it. Um, the minus 6 just goes on the end. I really should write this in a different uh, font so that you don't get confused. I don't want to make it confusing. The minus 6 goes on the end. We have a 4 here. And don't forget the x because it's 4x and a negative 3 x. By the way, the 4 is positive, so I'm putting a positive there. Okay, These two terms add up to x, and that's cool. And the very first term is 2x squared, so write that down. Here we go. From here, all we have to do is decomposition method. What we would do is we would look at the first two terms. I don't think I did it that way in the other video, so what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that. We look at the first two terms, and we look at these two terms, the last two terms, and we pull out a common factor from each one. And so we're going to do that here. Um, what's the common factor between 2 and 3? Well, there's nothing but a 1. But as far as the x's go, there is an x here and here. So we're going to bring an x out. And what's left on the inside? We'd have 2x minus 3. And then over here, what's the common factor between 4 and negative 6? It would be a 2, a positive 2, OK? And there's no x's, so we're just going to say that's fine. And what's left here? Well, here would be 2x, because 2 times 2x would be 4x. And over here, negative 6 divided by 2 is minus 3. And just like on the video I made with decomposition, if you get a bracket here and here, and if they have the same thing inside them, then you know that you've done things correctly and you can be very happy at this point, okay? Because we've done things correctly and it's really a good feeling. So you write down the 2x minus 3, you pull it out as a common factor from all of this, whoops, and then you take the leftovers, the x and the 2, positive 2 by the way, and you write it down right here, x plus 2. And now we know that if we were to multiply all of this out right here, if we were to multiply all of this out, this times that, this times that, this times that, this times that, using FOIL, we would end up getting 2x squared plus x minus 6. And we would be very happy, just like this person right here. So those are the methods of factoring, but this video is not quite finished yet. Remember, there's a possibility that your trinomial or binomial is not factor factorable, OK? And later on, um, we have other videos where we, we learn how to use something called, um, 
well, where things don't factor nicely. So we, we uh, look at videos later on where we're using the quadratic formula and we're able to find things using that. But for now, when it comes to just factoring, believe it or not, most trinomials, for example, are not factorable. So when your teacher's giving you questions like all of these, they're special questions. They're just the few that happen to be factorable out there. And your textbook is doing the same thing. So anyway, that's just a little more tidbit for you. Um, I hope you enjoy the other videos that explain each of these processes with a little more detail. So have a great day, everyone. And I don't know what else to say other than good luck out there. Take care.